We are here, the Town of Duck is here at the Field Research Facility for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We have with us today the Flock Academy, which is the Fundamental Lessons of Citizen Knowledge Group, which is our first ever Citizens Academy. We have the opportunity today to take a tour of this facility and learn about the research, the data, and the different types of equipment that they use to perform their experiments and, and to collect data, as this is the most studied beach in the world. Welcome to the FRF facility. <laughs> My name is Erin Durba, I'm the branch chief here, and I'm responsible for overseeing the 32 employees that we have at this facility, plus all of the interns and students and things that we bring in each year. Nowadays, we have a combination of missions. So we have a civil works mission where we're supporting all the Army Corps districts to help them with their planning, uh, beach rem remediations, replenishments, compound flooding events, different types of things that we're trying to research and support them on. But because we're the R&D arm of the Army, we also have a requirement from Congress to support our uh, military troops. So that might be the Navy, the Marines, the Army. So a lot of the research that we do here is to support our troops and to help them improve their safety when they're out in different conditions. We've gone from maybe one massive experiment per year to now we have equipment that's monitoring real time constant data sets, and we have the longest historical data record of coastal measurements in the world. So this is one of the types of devices that we have here. This is called the CRAB. It's our Coastal Research Amphibious Buggy. It allows us to install our equipment into the coastal environment. So anything we install has to be really stable and sturdy. We have all kinds of sensors along the dunes. We have a permanent LIDAR that sits out there, and the LIDAR realized that when the waves are breaking, that white foamy material from the, the breaking waves is actually a really good reflector for that laser. And we can actually see where the waves are breaking in the data sets. So this is the Argus Tower. This is the collaboration that we had with, the, with Oregon University. Originally they had just a regular VHS camera up there that they would collect data from time to time. We would take those VHS tapes. Now we've migrated to having what's called an Argus camera up there, which has a full 360 view of the entire beach, and that allows us to collect data every 15 minutes. This building right here is the one we had the ribbon cutting for in January of 23. It's brand new. It's the newest thing we have on the, our facility. So this is our military building um, for military work that we do here, and every poster that you see in the halls as we walk through is going to be specific research for our military branches. And when we go into the other building, that's gonna be civil works funded and that's going to, you'll see research on the walls for the civil works processes that we do. Many of the researchers we have here, they'll be on seven to 10 different projects across the board. So they might have some military projects, they might have some civil works projects, they might be dealing with LIDAR, they might be doing satellite imagery, they might be doing all of it. There's nothing like this in the world. And in fact, I'm constantly called by different countries wanting to come visit here and see our facility because they want to do something similar in their country. So what you'll notice is you don't see anything except the pier, but that's because we have hundreds of sensors that are out in the ocean right now that you can't see collecting data all the time. All that data comes back through the box at the end of our pier and is cabled to our computers through this black channel right here. What are these railroad tracks doing on this pier? Well, this used to be part of the original deployment system. It was called a SIS. And they would roll out here and it would have a davit arm that would go off the side of the pier and be able to deploy instruments into the ocean. This is a wind Doppler profiler. And I don't know a lot about it, but as far as I understand, we are looking at how the wind is moving and doing different currents as it's coming up over the dunes and then transiting sand down our coastal environment. Everybody always asks us, you know, why do you need a pier this long? And the answer was because we're on a continental shelf. It takes us this far to get out past some of the big breaking waves that we have. Yeah. And when we're trying to deploy instruments and things like that, uh, we need to be out past those, those big, big breakers. Um, so when we do dive operations, because all the instrumentation out here has to be cabled, we have to have divers that go down and do all that. So when the larks come out here, which I'll show you with our amphibious vehicles, we're able to send people down to hand them cables and different things so that they can go out and do what they need to do. You can't see it because of all the white caps, but we have a lot of white buoys out there that are denoting our eight meter array. And eight meters doesn't sound that big, but it's not the size of the array, it's the depth of the water that it's in. 
It is large, it's the largest array that, in the world. And so what is dealing with this? It's a cross meter array, it's just like this, and it's able to resolve in really high accuracy the direction and the size of the waves that are coming into our location. Okay, so as you guys are walking down here, um, some of the stuff that you're seeing here is from the Argus Tower. So you'll see a compilation of imagery showing a 180 degree view down the coastline so you can actually see kind of where that extends. And then the type of things, that, the type of data that they're collecting from that camera. Another thing that you guys can read about here, this is SandSnap. This is another citizen science initiative. You take a quarter or a nickel and you set it down on the sand on the beach and you snap a picture through this app and send it to the researchers. And what that does is create a grain size database for the world. Um, that helps us understand grain size, that helps us understand um, what the material or minerals are that are in that, that sediment, that will help us understand where beach renourishment needs to happen, things like that. So this is our machine and fabrication shop. Um, one of the problems of working in a research environment is that a researcher will come to you one morning and say, I had this really great idea. And so it's these guys' jobs to figure out how to build the thing that the researcher wants them to build. And so there's a lot of scrap around our facility that you might look at at first glance and say, oh man, they just have stuff laying around. Well, yeah, exactly, because we're always in need of something to build different types of platforms to set you know, equipment down on the bottom of the sea floor that's gonna be stable. And so these guys will weld all of that together and then they'll go out and they'll deploy that equipment. So we actually have four of them um, and each one is kind of configured slightly differently for whatever the purpose is that we intend to use it for. It's one of the safest ways to transit through the surf zone. We're very fortunate to have Aaron Durba, the director of the pier, lead us on this tour today. And this is really a great opportunity for not only Flock Academy, but for the town, because one of our six unifying principles is responsive, responsible leadership. And this is going to help fortify and foster a relationship with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which has such a great presence in our community.